Hi students, I just made a rather elaborate video and it didn't record. So I'm going to try to reproduce that. Before you start your split complementary uh, interior project and your drawing for it, um, I wanted to show you the general setup for one point and two point perspective drawings. I'll make another video on how to address your actual project based on which one you choose. Um, I just did the one point, but since nobody got to see it, I'll do it again. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the key to both of these, one or two point, is, prep, is like pre preparing, like getting it set up. Um, if you're doing one point perspective, the first thing you're going to do, this one's more um, straightforward than a two point. But I did put a few on there in case you want to do that, because if you feel like you want to revisit this from your drawing class, certainly do that. Okay. So here's your paper. You have your picture. I'm going to cover this up so you can't see what I just did. You have your picture, and you take a look at it, and you decide, where's my eye level in this picture? As you know, if you're looking at, like, say, a Pringles can and you look down and you have this steep ellipse or a vase or whatever, I'm always talking about ellipses or a bottle or something like that. When you look down, these ellipses are really steep. And as they start to go up, they get flatter and flatter and flatter until you hit your eye level. Now, if your eye level is in here and it's flat, everything changes. Now you're looking up. When you look up, it goes in reverse the other direction. Now the ellipses are becoming more and more visible so that by the time you get to the top of the bottle, it actually goes like that. I think a lot of, uh, it's kind of like against what your mind would think, but this is wider, this is less, this is less, and so on until it's flat, and then it progresses the other way, going up. This is unusual because you're not usually sitting somewhere looking at the top of a bottle. The more normal way you would see something, natural way I should say, is it's steeper, less steep, less steep, less steep, and less steep. But it still hasn't hit your eye. So in that case, your picture goes like this and that tells you how steep to make the bottom. That's why it's always better to draw with an understanding of the movement of the inside of something before shape. Shape is always the least important thing. All right, so here we go over here, same thing. If you were to draw a room or a railroad track or anything like that as equivalent to this, it would just be a triangle. It's not any different. So in this case, if I were to compare a triangle to this, triangle, open triangle, you can see how this starts to get less and less and then it's flat and then you look up and you've got a subtle triangle a little bit steeper a little bit steeper I exaggerated it but it's just so you can see see how that's the same as this so if you have an object that's more geometric or a bottle that's geometric it's really the same thing it's just that it's a triangle instead of a ellipse so triangles are what we're dealing with here so you're gonna put and this is with a T-square. My T-square is so massive that it knocks everything over, but you want to get your vertical first, wherever it is. This is before you even determine your eye level. If the sides are symmetrical, like in a one point, you're going to do the same width on either side. I'm going to start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The more lines, the better, as long as they're tapering. And then I'm going to do the other side, which is tricky because it gets knocked over. But this is another way to do it if you want to. As long as you hold it flush, it's good. This is the time-consuming part, is all the lines. It's better there because I can see what I was doing. All right, that's that. And then you want to make sure that you have your center line. Put more of 
these just so you can see. You can't have too many lines, but it's definitely helpful to let them get close together here and start to spread out. I like to do extra, because if you get them all on there, then you don't have to worry as much later about dealing with them. In other words, you don't have to keep grabbing your tools. But just make a whole bunch of lines and try to let them get further apart as they go out, because then it starts to get that sense of depth. Then you're going to figure out where your eye level hits. The eye level is, like I was saying before anyone saw what I was doing, if your head is here and you're standing here and you're looking down at a railroad, you're not going to be visible lower. This is you and that's behind you. But what you see is where your eye hits. So if I'm standing here and my head is up here looking at something, this is the perimeter of the picture, so I can make that clear. If I'm looking and my head's way up here, my eye is up here. So you have to determine your eye level or the eye level of whoever took that picture in that picture. I'll cover this. All right, so here we go. We have your eye level and the center line. Now there's only one thing to do. Make a gazillion lines through this dot. The dot is your eye, the center is the beginning of a one-point perspective. Draw through it, swing it, draw through it, swing it. The closer together, the better. If you miss one or you don't do it close enough, it just means you have to keep grabbing your yardstick and swinging it through. If you get them all there, not only does it give you options later for whatever's attached to the walls or whatever, it also gives you a visual right off the bat of depth. If you don't do enough of these, you don't get to have that effect. I'm, as you can see, I'm drawing from the outside across. You always want to draw, in any drawing, you want to start outside and move through extended lines so you're not like committed to this tiny little area. It's like when you make grids, you want to go like that. So this is for those of you who are choosing one point. And if not, it's just a refresher on the, still the same kind of concept. Okay, so that's step two. First find verticals, find your eye level, and then swing your, your dot through your eye level. Finally, the last thing with your T-square is from your eye level down, do something close together, and then a little further, and then a little further, real, real even further, and then finally really further. Whoops, shoot. See, I'm not using T-squares, so. And then from here, above the eye level, a little bit, little bit, more, more, and more. Now, you can actually start your drawing. It looks like a big mush, and clearly I missed, look, I missed, I did some uneven, but, I'm doing this really quickly, otherwise I literally will have like a four hour video and it's ridiculous. Ugh, not ideal. Anyway, these are horrible, I messed up, but this is the gist, you want all this there. Now, you can take a marker or some other pencil or something, especially because it's just a... basically adjust your drawing at this point. All right, so just as an example, let's say your picture is a, a tunnel. All you have to do now is look at your picture and figure out the width of the door and how it gets flat at your eye level. So let's say that's it right there. Now, all you have to do is follow the lines you already made And they might not be symmetrical, it's still one point. And then the ceiling and then the railroad tracks are already in here because you already made all those lines.
and the ceiling also spreads out. And here's the cool part is you already have the verticals on the walls. So now you have your general compositional structure. And then before you put in there whatever you want to add, you want to look at the picture and see if there's anything in there that you need to include that's basically part of the drawing that you need to put in there. For example, let's say there's a picture frame on the wall. You don't draw your picture frame like that. It's not, a, it's not facing you. It's coming at you through here. So you put a dot for the height and a dot for the base of your picture. Put your vertical, because you know your lines are even because you did the T-square. And then you figure out the width of it. Most people make these like this. They're not that wide. If you're looking down a hall, they're narrow. The widest you'll see is probably this one. So you just use what's there. All you're responsible for is measuring the width. So there you go, there's your picture on the wall. Now the next picture that's closer to the end is going to be much narrower. And almost invariably falls on the same line. So if this is on here, there you go. You can't change the widths you have to go with what's there. Like if there's one right next to it, it's going to be the same height and the same bottom, but it flares out and it's bigger and wider. If you make these too wide back here, they look really too close and too flat. So you're looking through here, out the window, and if you want you can fill it just to kind of get a sense of what you're looking at. And then let's say there's a picture frame here but it's at a different height than here. Or maybe it's a door. You put a dot for how close the door is to the ceiling, and then you figure out the width that you can actually see, which is very narrow usually, and you put a dot along that line that you already made, and then all you have to do is extend it to the floor. And then you have this starting to get interesting one point perspective. If you have, let's say, round chandeliers hanging there, just because they're round doesn't mean they're not on these points. If this is this width and it's a, a light fixture hanging down, wherever the edges of this are, continue on. So the next one is here. And the one in front of that is here. Do you see how huge it gets? Overlap is usually what happens too. But it's because this line and this line are all on the same path. So you have this this big one in the front and then tucking behind and then tucking behind. So when you crop this off, if that's your picture, you can see how that goes off the edge and then your first light is here. So I show you all this because I want you to see how the structure is the most important thing. Once you get this stuff wrapped up, you can really have a good time, not just matching the little objects and things, the nuances that are in there, but also the things that you want to add. Now you can even do things like lost and found line, where this is thick and disappears, thick and disappears, thick and disappears. This would be thicker, less, less, thicker, less. So you can use that split complementary system. I think I'm going to stop. I just that's just one point. Let's just leave it at that and then I'll do a little thing on two point.